Well, news is starting to trickle out that uh, Tim Zoo's next opponent is going to be announced soon, and some names, or exact, or actually one name, has been coming up, and that's Terrell Goucher. Twenty-two, two and one with eleven KOs. I've seen him fight live in real time um, in the Barclays Center when he took on Iris Lindy Lara, and I got to be honest. Us media, myself and other media, we were like looking like, what the fuck is going on? Why is everybody getting up and walking out? Like fans, well, if you go back and watch the card or find the, you know, fight video anywhere, you're going to start seeing fans getting up and walking out. Now, that's not, you know, a bad thing against Couché. I, mean, I guess it is. Basically, let me let me stop sugarcoating. He's not the most exciting fighter. Yeah, he hasn't been stopped. He's 34 years old, um, five foot ten. Um, last significant fight, October, um, excuse me, September 2020 against Erickson Lubin. He had a draw against Austin Trout um, in May of 2019. The Ares Landy Lara fight I was telling you about, and Dan, that was that long ago, October of 2017. And, you know, if Tim Zhu right here 20 and over 15 ko's 27 years old the soul taker last five fights takashi Inoye, steve spark late step in for mixer rafa dennis hogan a bowen morgan and when he really really jumped on the scene was him um demolishing jeff horn in eight but the thing is he's now the wbo mandatory for the winner of jamal charlo versus excuse me, Jamel Charlo versus Bron Castaño too, which is supposed to be taking place in March in the California area. Like if that fight is done, it's official. Now, here's the problem. If it is Terrell Goucher, it's gonna make you wonder like, okay, all right. You have Bakram Murtazaliev, who's the IBF mandatory. No matter what happens, he is the guy that is supposed to get the winner of Charlo versus Castaño immediately. So what you see here is number one by the IBF, Murtazaliev is ranked. Number three is Tim Zhu. Tim Zhu is number one mandatory by the WBO, Murtazaliev number three. Michael Dumed Kurbanov and Liam Smith. I mean, Magomed Kubanov and Patrick Teixeira, former WBO champion, they have an agreement to fight. Their fight was postponed a couple of months ago. They're waiting for a new date. So why Terrell Goucher, who is currently not ranked by any of the sanctioning bodies, but don't be surprised if next month he'll be ranked. That'll be a, red, a big telling sign for you. But why him and not Murtazaliev or, you know, a fight of more significance? I don't get it. What's your thoughts on this fight? You know, it's it's not official, ladies and gentlemen, but that's the rumor going around is that Tim Zhu and Terrell Goucher are going to fight. Well, my thoughts on this is that it's just another bullshit fight against a no-name talent that's going to give him absolutely no credibility. And it's not official yet, So, but if this does happen, you have to think, what the fuck is Tim Zhu doing to himself? I mean... This is a pretty what? vulture move, though, like you called him. This is pretty vulturous. If that's not even a word, oh. but I had to put that out there. Exactly, exactly. I mean, as I said, this is the vulture mentality. He's picking off the most piss-weak opponent he can lay his hands on, right? That's not ranked. It hasn't fought in how long? Um, well over 12 months. Well, well he fought. Uh, he, he got a stoppage in, in January 2021. I mean, in uh, March 2021 okay. against a Jamonte okay. uh, Clark. Yeah. But here's right. the thing, yeah. you know, I've like he's not, if this was on the uh, David Benavidez versus uh, Ronald Ellis card, he's not really an exciting fighter, man. You know, I'm going to go ahead and say, you know, I'm guessing that they're, you know, if, they, if they're picking Terrell Goucher, it's because, you know, they're going to say, okay, you know, former world contender, he's been in there with Iris Dandy Lara. He's been in there with um, number one WB contender after he, you know, him and Fendora. He's been in there with uh, Erickson Lubin. You know, he's been in there with, you know, Austin Trout. Austin Trout beat Canelo. You know, I'm guessing that's how they're going to try to sell it. But it ain't going to work. Like, you know, listen, hardcore fans ain't going to go for that shit. No, because he lost all three. Well, he yeah. drew against Trout and he lost to the other two. Yeah. So it's just, it's, it's, Tim Zoo needs to be fighting 
And here's the other thing you told me about. This bloke's a PBC fighter. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Mark Rosaliev's a PBC fighter. Yes, he is. Why don't you just fight Mark Rosaliev? If he's going to fight a PBC fighter, why not fight the best guy he can lay his hands on? Yeah. Because I've heard, I've heard from more than one source that Tim's possibly going to fight this Terrell bloke in America, right? On the under, it possibly could be on the undercard to Charlie Castagno too. If Mazzelli is there, why not just fight exactly him? Exactly, fight him. This is all hypothetical. So, so, so let this me, is all hypothetical. It's not official yet, but ugh. So let me break this down for you. Murtazaliev, because of the agreement and his IBF mandatory status, he has fought on two Charlo undercards. He fought on uh, the Charlo Castaño undercard against a, um, what's this guy he fought? Uh, Carrie Gray. He fought on both the Charlo pay-per-view, the Charlo Sergio, um, Sergei Derevianchenko, the Charlo versus Jason Rosario um, against a Manny Woods. And then before that, he fought on Canelo versus Sergei um, Kovalev, you know, basically, so wait, he is, from my understanding, he's fighting on PBC cards, but he is a Kathy Duva, um, uh, Duva boxing main event, US main event in the States boxing fighter under the same banner as Sergey Kovalev. But basically I'm, listen, I'm just going to say it. He's a, he's, you might as well say he's a PBC fighter. He's a PBC fighter. So, you know, as you're saying, if he's going to be fighting, you know, Terrell Goucher, possibly on the PBC card here in the States, then why not Murtazaliev? And then that's two birds, one stone, because you'll be fighting for the IBF number one contender status while fighting a credible opponent who is Russian, by the way, you know, which would be able to bring in so much TV money from Russia because of Costa Zoo, his father. Exactly. And, you know, Murtazaliev has a pretty big following in Russia. So the Russians enjoy their boxing. Mm. So it, it, it makes sense to fight him. But, I mean, you know, if, if this does happen, I'm just like, Ugh, really? I'm yeah. just going to shake my head and go, yeah, I, I really like to know who makes the decisions on this because, like, this is not in the best interest of Tim Zoo at all. There's no one who can justify that this is a good fight for him. No yeah, one. I mean, you know, but, you know, it, it is. See, here's the thing, you know. He's, he's went downhill. Was I got his resume here, uh, Tim Zoo? It's Jeff Horn. Okay, all right. I'm going to go ahead and say it. I've said it on the record many times. Jeff Horn didn't look like himself. He was battle torn. The man didn't have no voice. He looked sick. You know, you got Bowen Morgan. And he has a fourth sense. Yeah, he has a fourth sense. You got Bowen Morgan, who, as you know, um, Big J likes to say, a blown up welterweight. You got Dennis Hogan, who was coming off of two brutal fights, one in which he should have won against um, Jaime Munguia, and then the other getting stopped by Charlo, moving up all the way to 160. He put a late replacement in uh, Stevie Spark. The uh, tough, you know, which I expected and predicted it would go the different distance against Takashi and Noye, you know, a guy with no head movement who was there just to be punched, just to be punched he was there for, you know, and then Terrell Goucher. It's like, you know, yes, you can say he fought for a world title before, but so did a Noye and Dennis Hogan, and Jeff Horn was a champion. But, you know, Terrell Goucher has not accomplished anything, you know, for me to for me to say, yo, this is a good fight for him. Exactly. You know, I mean, if it's him, I it, don't get it. I don't get it. Well, I yeah, know. Well, if it's him, they'll be like, oh, yeah, he'll break into America. Yeah, he'll take out an American on home soil. Yeah, this that's will be probably going to be it. These... I think that's what they're going to do. Try to build it like that. His American debut, yeah. they want to guide you slow, all that shit. So basically, he come over here to America and restarting again. Well, and reference our last video, we all know how American debuts go for Aussies, even if they win. Mm -hmm. Hence, Dempsey, Brock, and Liam. They I mean, they good. all won, but they, they didn't look good. So, so yeah, and as I said before, Australians have a abysmal in abysmal record in America. Nine mm -hmm. times out of ten, they lose and they get knocked the fuck out. Yeah. So, yeah, but, you know, um, we shouldn't probably get too excited because it's not official yet, but just yeah. the fact that it's even being entertained, you're like, Ugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
We definitely will be following the uh, story. So as soon as something becomes official, you know, um, Tim Zoo was supposed to return next month, but it's looking like it's likely going to be, you know, in mid to late March or possibly April. But if something comes up and as soon as we hear something, we're definitely going to be uh, covering the story. Uh, take your time out. Like the video. Subscribe. Follow us on uh, Twitter at Old Mate Big J. You know, um, just the letter J and T Street Controversy on um, Twitter and on um instagram follow us on um excuse me my website sorry i'm tired sorry my website 53360.com our rankings are updated in accordance with the sanctioned embodies wbc wba ibf wbo and ring magazine the movers and shakers right now in the 154 pound division in which tim zoo is competing charlo castani was taking place in the beginning of march um, we're still waiting for an official announcement, but the fight is done and confirmed. Eric Salub and Sebastian Fandora, they are fighting to be the WBC mandatory. Israel Madrimov versus Mik Mikhail Sorvo just had a very controversial ending. Bakram Murtazaliev, IBF mandatory, waiting for an announcement on who his next fight is going to be. And you have Michael Dumad Karbanov and Patrick Teixeira. They're going to be, um, they're waiting for a new date for their fight and liam smith versus jesse vargas which was supposed to be on february the 5th was postponed due to covid and that right there ladies and gentlemen is the 154 pound division take your time out like the video subscribe and talk to you soon thanks for watching